Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two as sword. MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware. Didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there, not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal. Practice re. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome again to the Crystal Jones Show. It's the show that's all about life's balance. And I'm your talk show host, Crystal Jones. I want to greet you in the name of Ahaya, Bahashem Yeshayo, Wawarak Kadash. Let me tell you how you can watch this show weekly. You can go to bronxnet.org and you can watch it on channels 951 and 2137, the Inspire channel. All right. Also, you can always check me out on the YouTube channel, the Crystal Jones TV show. Go to that uh, channel and subscribe, like and share my videos. Also, check out my Instagram page at the Crystal Jones show where I have inspirational quotes from the Bible. And you can check me out on HebrewConnect.tv as well. OK. All right. So today, you know, we've been continuing on with the story of Moses, who has now become the new leader, and we're on part seven. And um, as you all know, from the time that Moses was born, uh, he they they were tra tracing after him, trying to get rid of him. So uh, he he was hid by his mother and his sister. They hid him in a little boat that they sent down the river and the Pharaoh's daughter saw him and had compassion on him and raised him as her own child. Now, all that time, his sister had, she was, she was very uh, wise when she saw that Pharaoh's daughter had mercy on him as a baby. She said, well, let me go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse him. So of course that was her mother, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> So his mother, his real mother was raising him all along. So she was telling him about the ways of the Hebrews, right? So um, he grew up uh, learning the ways of Hebrews, but he grew up as an Egyptian. Okay. So as he got older and whatnot, um, they, you know, he was like a, uh, an, a, I guess you could say an adopted child, so to speak, within the king's house. So he grew up in royalty, but he always knew who his people were. So when he saw what was going on with his people, that they were treating us very bad and they had us, in, you know, enslaved us because they had forgot what our forefather Joseph did for them by saving them from a famine that had come upon the land. So they mistreated us because our people were multiplying there were a lot of you know we were still having children and stuff like that they didn't like that and thought that should war break out that maybe we would betray them so instead of them thinking well why don't we be nice to them so at least they'll be on our side right nah so uh as you know uh moses had gotten to a confrontation with the hebrew with uh the the egyptians that were mistreating the hebrews and he had killed one of them and so then he had to flee the land because the, the king found out about it and he was going to have Moses killed. But little did they know that God was raising Moses to be a savior for us. He was going to bring us Egyptian bondage. So now we're at the point where Moses has uh, run away from Egypt and he becomes the uh he becomes king over one of the uh not ham right one over one of the hamite groups the cushites and so he's there for an amount of years of course he's ruling but the queen doesn't like the fact that he's not really one of them so she has him put out so he's going through all these different things right because god is raising up a leader and when he's god is raising you up you will be going through some troubles so that you can be humbled and you can understand leadership. Okay. So now we're at the point in the book of Jasher, which is the apocryphal book. Uh, 
this was, you know, one of the books that was originally in the Bible when King James came together with the scholars and, you know, they put the, um, the Bible together. So in this book, Joshua, the 76th chapter, you see where um, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, he, you know, wanted to uh, come after uh, the, the Hebrews. So the Lord began to afflict him with a plague and he afflicted him with sickness. And the sickness, this man was so crazy, this Egyptian king, he was having our children killed so that he could take the blood and put it on the sores that God had breaking out on his body. What a wicked man he was. He was crazy. So anyway, this is the part we're at. So we're at Joshua, the 76th chapter and the 28th verse. And it says, and when the Lord had afflicted the plague upon Pharaoh, king of Egypt, he asked his wise men and sorcerers to cure him. And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. Now he was listening to some really idiotic people to tell him something crazy, kill the kids and, you know, what? So this is where we're going to be at later on today. All right. So, you know, stay tuned for that because, you know, I, that don't even sound right. Right. Anybody with common sense would have said, what are you talking about? But not him. Right. OK, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to today's news. OK, as many of you know, I, I'm really concerned about what's going on with the children. OK. Who's watching out for these kids? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so many different crazy things that's going on with people. And these kids, they trying to snatch them from their parents in the stores and, uh, you know, all kind of crazy things. And here's an, uh, an article that I read here from the People magazine, you know, People uh, News, all right? Um, after a child was left in an apartment for days, with deceased parents, a suspect is arrested in New York. Now I'm saying to myself, how is the child left in the apartment for days? Nobody looks out for these people. Nobody knows these people. They don't have any, do they not have any family or anything that you're, you're out of these people's sight for days? Doesn't this baby have like a babysitter? Does he go, does the baby go to a uh, nursery school? What, what's going on? So it says, police are still looking for two other people wanted in, con in connection with the August 21st deaths. All right. Um, police in Syracuse have arrested one of three people they suspect was behind a brutal double homicide that likely left a small child scarred for life. Okay. Investigators believe, I won't say their names, that this couple was shot multiple times on August 21st in the apartment, but their remains were not found till August 24th. Also found in the apartment that day was their five-year-old child. According to a Syracuse police statement, the child was physically unharmed, but had lived for three days with his parents' dead bodies. All right? Now... They said that the name of the person that's identified as a possible suspect, all right? He was arrested by the police. Um, that is where, you know, uh, so this person is being held, right? Um, this just is, it just, I don't know. It just sickens me to, to hear this, that nobody knew, you know, it says the bo the bodies were found finally on August 24th by a home health care worker. All right. But this baby went for three days without eating and in the body with dead, dead parents that, you know, that's disgusting. Like nobody, this child wasn't missing from anybody's life that, you know, somebody could say, Oh, I didn't see little so-and-so today or, 
you know, where was this child going to school at five? Oh, right at five you should be in some school some you should be going to school right so i'm just concerned for these kids that nobody is really watching out for them and sometimes they miss and disappear a lot of times i have them on the show their picture and stuff like that and sometimes these kids go for days before people realize that even in some of these so-called foster homes sometimes they're just taking the money uh for taking the check for taking care of the child not feeding them they don't know where they at they ain't seen them you know maybe the children run away because they're being treated badly but that that's not acceptable with the lord at all and those involved in these wicked things how could you kill the kids parents and leave the child there that that that's you bringing them you really bringing a bad thing on yourself and whoever did that they will get their just reward. The Lord is not pleased with that. And and neither are the people, neither are his people. I'm one of his people. We tired of it. We tired. Stop doing this to these kids, y'all. This is disgusting. And it's ungodly. And you need to stop it. Because you bring in that karma, that, that stuff going to come right back on you. Right back on you. So that's wicked to leave a five-year-old like that and kill the parents it's terrible so i just had to say something about that that this is not acceptable it's disgusting stop doing this nonsense you shouldn't be running around uh killing people anyway but to do that and leave a child disgusting so anyway the next thing that we're going to go to is our health and wellness Okay, we get into our colder months in the winter where it's very cold. And sometimes we have to use heating appliances because there's no heat. Sometimes they don't turn up the heat when they're supposed to. I think it's October 15th. Some of these places just decide, they to, I ain't putting up no heat. We ain't doing no heat, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then people have to use electric heaters and all of this kind of thing. So you have to, you know, go online and look for safe, you know, heating appliances that if the thing fall over or whatever, it's not going to catch fire. You know, it's not a fire hazard. You know, check it out so that, you know, because you, those of you who have kids too, sometimes your kids knock stuff over and all kind of things like that. You know, the dog might knock it over with his tail stuff like that you know and you yourself you know make sure you plugging it into the right places and things like that all right so for the business tip do an indoor event with the importance of and examples of of uh, safe heating appliances you know maybe you can go to some of these hardware stores and things like that maybe they would do a presentation for you right there at the store to show you you know, different things. That's a good business thing to do too. Somebody may open up their store to you, some of these places, you know, and especially if they know you, you live in a neighborhood and stuff and you say, hey, I would like, you know, my group, whether it's your church or whatever to come over and they can demonstrate things for them and show them appliances and things like that, that would be good for them. Even Home Depot, you may be able to go over there because the Home Depot does a lot of online things, online demonstrations. You could request that there. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of places just do that for you, you know, for you for free, so that you know you be safe and not sorry. Okay, so these are just some of my suggestions. So I, I hope it's a help for you. All right, so we are down to the credo of the day. All right, so we're gonna say Shema Yasharala. Ahaya alahaya nawa, ahaya ekad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. He is one God. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter and the fourth verse. All right, so we're going to get back into the new leader who is Moses. Okay, and the wicked Pharaoh that's saying to kill the kids, to kill the Hebrew kids so that their blood could help his disease that he caused upon himself for being wicked and evil to our people right so we're going back to jasher the 76th chapter all right and i'm going to be around the 28th verse and when the lord had inflicted the plague upon pharaoh so the lord can inflict you with sickness 
king of Egypt, he asked his wise men and sorcerers to cure him. So he's going after which people that do witchcraft to cure him, right? And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed, telling lies, right? And Pharaoh hearkened to them and sent his ministers to Goshen to the children of Israel to take their little children. And that's the same thing that's going on today, y'all. Sometimes, a lot of time, when these kids are missing, they're, sac they, they're using these kids as blood sacrifice and all kind of crazy stuff. And Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants. It, this is how wicked these people were. Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants. That's why they don't want you to read the apocryphal books, because it gives you the whole background of the first five books. Okay, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It tells you a lot about what happened back then. There's nothing new under the sun, y'all. They were doing this nonsense back then in those days and times. All right, so they went and took the infants of the children of Israel from the bosoms of their mothers by force, and they brought them to Pharaoh daily, a child each day. And the physicians killed them. The doctors killed them and applied them to the plague. Thus did they all the days. And the number of the children which Pharaoh slew was 375. But the Lord hearkened not to the physicians mm -hmm. of the king of Egypt, and the plague went on increasing mightily. So the Lord allowed this plague of Pharaoh to go on and on and on because these people were so wicked. And Pharaoh was 10 years afflicted with that, that plague. Still, the heart of Pharaoh was more hardened against the children of Israel. You would think this man would understand that you're not going to be healed because it's you. All right. That's why you're not being healed. And at the end of 10 years, the Lord continued to afflict this fool with destructive plagues, not just one plague, different plagues. And the Lord smote him with a bad tumor and sickness at the stomach. And that plague turned to a severe boil. At that time, the two ministers of Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen, where all the children of Israel were. I explained that to you the, the last, or if you go back to my last video about how we lived in Egypt, but in the area of Goshen, because we were, we had a, we were known for shepherding and for the Egyptians Shepherding was a curse to them, which is weird, but anyway. And so uh, Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen where all the children of Israel were and went to the house of Pharaoh. I'm sorry, at, the, at that time, the two ministers of Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen where all the children of Israel were and they went to the house of Pharaoh and said to him, we have seen the children of Israel slacken in their work and negligent in their labor. Doesn't that sound familiar? Don't they always say that our people are lazy, but yet we built this land, yet we came across many, the, the Atlantic Ocean where they threw us in the water and all kind of stuff like that. And some of our people couldn't take the bad treatment, so they jumped off the boat. And we got here and we invented things. They wouldn't let us patent it and all of that. We worked their land. They sure didn't. So, but we're lazy. That's crazy, right? So, now, uh, these people are are lying on us and saying that we're not doing our work. Sounds familiar. And when Pharaoh heard the words of his ministers, his anger was kindled against the children of Israel exceedingly, for he was greatly grieved at his bodily pain. And he answered and said, Now that the children of Israel know that I am ill, they turn and scoff at us. Now, therefore, harness my chariot for me, and I will betake myself to Goshen, and will see the scoff of the children of Israel with which they are deriding me. So his servants harnessed the chariot for him, and they took and made him ride upon a horse, for he was not able to ride of himself. And he took with him ten horsemen and ten footmen and went to the children of Israel to Goshen. Now, at this time, Moses is not there. And when they had come to the border of Egypt, because remember Moses had Moses fled, the king's horse passed into a narrow place elevated in the hollow part of the vineyard, fenced on both sides, the low plain country being on the other side. 
and the horses ran rapidly in the place and pressed each other, and the other horses pressed the king's horse. And the king's horse fell into the low plain whilst the king was riding upon it. And when he fell, the chariot turned over the king's face, and the horse lay upon the king, and the king cried out, for his flesh was very sore. So the, with all the commotion of the horses, the horse fell on top of the king's face, right? And he had those boils on his face. So he's crying out. And the flesh of the king was torn from him, and his bones were broken, and he could not ride. For this thing was from the Lord to him. So the Lord was plaguing him. For the Lord had heard the cries of his people, of the children of Israel, and their affliction. Just like he heard our cries when we were over here in this land in slavery. And his servants carried him upon their shoulders a little at a time. And they brought him back to Egypt. And the horsemen who were with him came also back to Egypt. And they placed him in his bed. And the king knew that his end was come to die. So, Appar 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 I'm sorry, I get Apparanath the queen his wife came and cried before the king and the king wept a great weeping with her so he's there crying with his wife and all his nobles and servants came on that day and saw the king and that affliction and wept a great weeping with him as when 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 something like that make you humble and the princes of the king and all his counselors advised the king to cause one to reign in his stead in the land whomsoever he should choose from his sons so they realizing this man is really ill so they're going to need another king they're going to need somebody to uh reign over them and the king had three sons and two daughters which apparanath the queen his wife have born to him besides the king's children of concubines right they had these concubines and all that nonsense and these were their names, the firstborn, Arthri, the second, Atticom, and the third, Marion, and their sisters, the name of the elder, Bathia, and of the other, Akuzi. And Arthri, the firstborn of the king, was an idiot, precipitate, and hurried in his words. Okay, so he, he wasn't too smart, you know. But Atakam was a cunning and wise man and knowing in all the wisdom of Egypt, but of unseemly aspect. So he didn't look so good. He was thick in flesh, they said, and very short in stature. His height was one cubit. So he's kind of a stubby looking guy. And when the king saw Atakam, his son, intelligent and wise in all things. So he didn't maybe not look so hot, but he was very intelligent in everything. And the king resolved that he should be king in his stead after his death. Now, this is the king that was over us. Not like that lie that they have with Charlton Heston and all of them when they do. Moses and the Ten Commandments, they say Ramses. Ramses was never over us. This is the lie that they tell to change the whole story of who the original Jews were. They, they changed everything biblically speaking that's why when they do these movies you see european people as the israelites but that was never so so when you go over these books and you see the names of these people that reigned and whatnot these were black people okay and the 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 person that was over us at that time was Atticam. as you see he came into power he was not ramses all right, so these lies that they told to switch out the people, they're always switching out people, right? So the king saw that Atticam, his son, intelligent and wise in all things, the king resolved that he should be king instead after his death. And he took for him a wife, Geduda, daughter of Abelot. And he was 10 years old, and she bare unto him four sons, right? And he afterward went and took three wives and begat eight sons and three daughters. And the disorder greatly prevailed over the king, and his flesh stank like the flesh of a carcass cast upon the field in summertime during the heat of the sun. So his father, who was reigning as king at that time, you know, the king that was sick, 
he he began to stink. That's how bad it was. All he had to do was repent and turn from his ways and the Lord would have healed him. And when the king saw that his sickness had greatly strengthened itself over him, he ordered his son Atticum to be brought to him and they made him king over the land in his place. And at the end of three years, the king died in shame, disgrace, and disgust. And his servants carried him and buried him in the sepulcher of the kings of Egypt in Zoan Mizraim. But they embalmed him not as was usual with kings, for his flesh was putrid, it was nasty. And his servants carried him and buried him in the sepulcher of the kings of Egypt in Zoan Mizraim. But they embalmed him not as was usual with kings, for his flesh was putrid and they could not approach to embalm him on account of the stench. So they buried him in haste. They hurried up and buried him. It stank so bad. For this evil was from the Lord to him. Yes, God will curse you. For the Lord had requited him evil for the evil which in his days he had done to Israel. So a lot of what you see happening to different countries now is for what they've done to our people. The slavery, the mistreatment of our people all over the world. Because remember, we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. And we look different now because we come from 12 different tribes. Okay, so we were scattered. That's why you have Gad, the in, you know, the North American and the different Indians that were already here. Okay, they look different from who would be my people, the Negroes, right? We, we don't look, we really don't look alike, but... We're from one of the 12 tribes. They're the tribe of Gad. My people are the tribe of Judah. Um, the other half of, you know, my family, my, my mother's family, some of them may be from Benjamin because they're from the Caribbean. All right. Also, you have the Filipino people, the, uh, uh, you know, from the, Naft the tribe of Naphtali, the Hawaiians, the Fijis, the, uh, the some of the Korean people, the... Um, what what do you call Filipino and you know different uh people of you know in that area and whatnot we all look different but we're we're family we're we're just from different tribes we're the 12 tribes of Israel so we look different now because we've been scattered you look at Issachar it's the Mexicans I don't look you know I made that and the Mexicans don't look like the Filipinos and you know uh Issachar is the Mexicans Ephraim is the the, the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans. And you have um, the Levi is the Haitians. Uh, there are so many of us in different places, uh, you know, of the earth that, you know, the people of color and they're, they're Israelites, but we were just scattered. And one day we will come back together again very soon. All right, you see how this world is going off course. They're, they're saying that they're gonna do their new world order Order, but Christ had got a whole different agenda. And when he returns, he's going to gather us. We will be gathered back to him. And he's going to set up his kingdom right there in Jerusalem. Okay, he's going to clean it out and he's going to set it up and he's going to gather us back together. All right, and we'll be a family again of people and we will bring all the nations back to the worship of the Most High God. That's our purpose is to do that and to judge the fallen angels, the ones that, you know, fell, the ones that um, decided they were going to um, have sexual relations with the women on earth. And the Lord said, no, I didn't create them for that. They're eternal. They didn't need to continue as families of people. It's the people on earth that needed to. That's where they get the Nephilim. That's where those giants and all that kind of stuff came from. That's the Nephilim seed. Okay. So, now, let me get back to what I was talking about. Okay, so uh, you you see they embalmed him not, this particular king, because he, uh, he stank, right? So he died with terror, with shame, and his son Atticum reigned in his place. All right, so now we're going to Joshua the 77th chapter. Now, Atticum was 20 years old when he reigned over Egypt. He reigned for only four years. Something must not be too right, right? 
in the 206th year of Israel's going down to Egypt, did Adakim reign over Egypt, but he continued not so long in his reign over Egypt as his fathers had continued their reign. So his forefathers reigned for, you know, extended amounts of time, but this guy only reigned four years. For Melal, his father reigned 94 years in Egypt, but he was 10 years sick and died. So Melal was uh, the king that reigned before him. Um, he, But he he was sick and died because it says he was wicked before the Lord. Okay, so I don't care what culture you come from. They're still the most high God. What 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 uh, religion you come from, you could pretend like God don't exist. <laughs> Whatever, right? That apparently it don't matter. The Lord take you out, right? You want to ignore him? Okay, bye-bye, right? So... Uh, his his father was wicked before the Lord, and all the Egyptians called the name of Adakim Pharaoh like the name of his fathers, as was their custom to do in Egypt. They called all of their ruling people uh, pharaohs, you know, their ruling kings. And all the wise men of Pharaoh called the name of Adakim Ahaz, for short, is called Ahaz in the Egyptian language. So Adakim was called Ahaz. They call him short, shorty, whatever, you know. And Atticum was exceedingly ugly and he was a cubit and a span. And he had a great beard which reached to the soles of his feet. Wow. And Pharaoh sat upon his father's throne to reign over Egypt. This is Atticum. And he conducted the government of Egypt in his wisdom. And while he reigned, he exceeded his father and all the preceding kings in wickedness. So he didn't learn nothing from his father. He decided he gonna be wicked. And he increased his yoke over the children of Israel. These guys are stupid, man. They ain't, <laughs> I'm sorry to say that y'all, forgive me, but like, are you, you just stuck on being silly? And he went with his servants to Goshen, again, bothering us, to the children of Israel. And he strengthened the labor over them. So he made, made it harder for us. And he said to them, complete your work each day's task and let not your hands slacken from our work from this day forward as you did in the days of my father. Lying again like they lied on us. And he placed officers over them from amongst the children of Israel. So he had our own people watching out over us. And over these officers, he placed taskmasters from amongst his servants. So he placed our own people over us, but placed people over them to watch them watching over us. So you know that's wickedness, right? If you got to do all of that, then you must not be doing something right. And he placed over them a measure of bricks for them to do according to that number day by day. And he turned back and went to Egypt. And at that time, taskmasters of Pharaoh ordered the officers of the children of Israel according to the command of Pharaoh saying, thus says Pharaoh, do your work each day and finish your task and observe the daily measure of bricks. Diminish not anything. And it shall come to pass that if you are deficient in your daily bricks, I will put your young child in their stead. So if a brick is missing, they're going to take your baby and put the baby in the building where the brick should be, hoping your child dies. This is how evil these, do you see? That's why I'm like, is anybody watching out for these kids? Because they seem to have a, the spirit of Pharaoh in this country. That seemed, these people seem with like wicked, like these Egyptian spirits or something. They, something wrong to have a five-year-old wandering around, you know? And the taskmasters of Egypt did so in those days as Pharaoh had ordered them. And whenever any deficiency was found in the children of Israel's measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh would go to the wives of the children of Israel and take infants of the children of Israel to the number of bricks deficient. Like if there were bricks missing, five bricks, they would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the building. These are wicked, devilish people. They would put them in the the building instead of the bricks. Whilst their fathers and mothers were crying over them and weeping when they heard the weeping voices of their infants in the wall of the building. So the kids would be crying and you could hear your kid crying. And the taskmasters prevailed over Israel 
that the Israelites should place their children in the building so that a man placed his son in the wall and put mortar over him. Wow. Whilst his eyes wept over him and his tears ran down upon his child. And the taskmasters of Egypt did so to the babes of Israel for many days. And no one pitied or had compassion over the babies of the children of Israel. That's just like they do now with our kids. All these different uh, liquids that they give our children and then the kids don't make it, if you know what I mean. It's the same nonsense, just a different tactic. And the number of all the children killed in the building was 270, some whom they had built upon instead of the bricks. Oh, so they put dead kids were in the building as bricks, Ew. which had been left deficient by their fathers and some whom they had drawn out dead from the building. And the labor imposed upon the children of Israel in the days of Atticum exceeded in hardship that which they performed in the days of his father. So this was worse than what his father was doing to our people. Same thing, different day. Okay, uh, now look at what they're going to be doing to the poorer of our people now. Okay, with all the people that they're bringing in over here, they're giving them everything right away. Whereas some of our people who had came over as immigrants and stuff like that, took them years to become citizens. Not anymore. They're going to let these people become citizens right away. And they're going to take everything. All of our tax dollars that should be going to our people are not going to go to them. They're going to go to strangers that we don't even know. And our people will still be, our people be out on the street uh, with no food, um, I see it every day on park benches, living outside with nothing because they can food, bring these people from over, you know, from other countries and make them do what they want them to do because they want to turn this place into a dictatorship. So in the children of Israel side every day on account of their heavy work, for they had said to themselves, behold, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will rise up and lighten our work. So they thought that this man was going to lighten things for them, but he was worse. But they increased the latter work more than the former. And the children of Israel sighed like ah, at this. And their cry ascended to God on account of their labor. And God heard the voice of the children of Israel in that cry in those days. And God remembered to them his covenant which he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the Lord is saying, listen, I hear you, but you got to do what I tell you to do. You're my people. I have chosen you. You got to go back to my law, statutes, and commandments because this is how you're going to live. You are people that are set apart. Go back to what I told you. And God saw the burden of the children of Israel and their heavy work in those days, and he determined to deliver them as he is doing today. It won't be much longer. Eventually, we will be back home. All right? This is not our home. They let us know in everything they do that we don't count. It's no point wearing them T-shirts. <laughs> I'm sorry. It ain't no point wearing them T-shirts because these people are wicked. They don't care. Okay? I'm not saying that we should we, we should let them run over us, but at the same time, they, they're not going to change, believe it, because there's no such thing as two kingdoms ruling at one. It's either Esau is going to rule, which is their group of people, or Jacob, which is us. Esau is the end of this world. If you go to Second Ezra and read what it says, Esau is the end of this world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. They're Esau, we're Jacob. Their kingdom is going down, because look, if they were really so gifted in what they were doing, would we be sending money, billions of dollars, taxpayers' dollars out to uh, help with a war that, for what? I mean, they're sending billions and they can't even help the people here. Does that sound like people that should be, that, you know, does that sound like people that know what they're doing or care really what they're doing? Okay, um, they're 
allowing people to just come here by the bus loads every day, every day, every day, every day. All right. Does that sound like people that know what they're doing? No. But when Christ comes to rule and reign, that's when Jacob, we're Jacob, our 12 tribes, we will rule and reign with Christ because it will be a fair kingdom. It will be a kingdom where everybody is blessed and benefit from it. This only one group of people, that 1% of people that make money over the top and their cr crazy ideas that they have that they trying to bring here wait till you see the stuff that they got with with some of this ai technology and all of this kind of stuff to replace you all right and moses the son of amram was still confined in the in the dungeon in those days in the house of ruel now remember at this time moses was put in jail okay because he had helped uh these women from midian okay and their father decided uh to put uh moses in jail right because moses had uh become king over the cushites and different people were killed in in within these battles so uh ruel decided to put moses in jail when he helped uh, his daughters. And Zipporah, the daughter of Ruel, did support him with food secretly day by day because she knew he was right. She knew he was just in, in his actions. And Moses was confined in the dungeon in the house of Ruel for 10 years. And at the end of 10 years was the first year of the reign of Pharaoh over Egypt in the place of his father. Zipporah said to her father Ruel, no person inquires or seeks after the Hebrew man whom thou didst bind in prison now 10 years. Now, therefore, if it seem good in thy sight, let us send and see whether he is living or dead. But her father knew not that she had supported him, right? And Ruel, her father, answered and said to her, He's ever has ever such a thing happened that a man should be shut up in a prison without food for 10 years and that he should live? So this man had put Moses in prison without any, he didn't think he was getting food. He, he didn't send any food for him. His daughter had enough sense to realize that Moses was a just man. And Zipporah answered her father. So she's trying to help him out. Like, let me help a brother out. And Zipporah answered her father saying, surely thou hast heard that the God of the Hebrews is great and awful and does wonders for them at all times. He it was who delivered Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans. Remember, Abraham had come from the, the land of Chaldea. Look back at those people back then. Do they look clear colored to you? No, they're black people. All right. That was where God has separated Abraham from and promised him to be a nation of people of who we are now. We're the Hebrews by blood and we're Israelites by nationality. All right. Now he it was who delivered Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans and Isaac from the sword of his father and Jacob from the angel of the Lord who wrestled with him at the ford of Jabbok. Also with this man has he done many things. He delivered him from the river of Egypt and from the sword of Pharaoh and from the children of Cush so also can he deliver him from famine and make him live so his daughter ruel's daughter zipporah is wiser than he is she's letting him know listen he serves a god that you don't really want to mess with because this man can take everybody out <laughs> this this guy can take everybody out we've seen it happen and the things seem good in the sight of ruel and he did according to the word of his daughter and sent to the dungeon to ascertain what became of Moses. And he saw and behold, the man Moses was living in the dungeon, standing upon his feet, praising and praying to the God of his ancestors, the most high God, Ahia, Asha, Ahia, who revealed himself to Moses and says, I am that I am. You, we're going to be covering that soon with Moses' adventures with God himself, right? And Ruel commanded Moses to be brought out of the dungeon. So they shaved him and he changed his prison garments and ate bread. 
some of our leaders, most of our leaders at some point were imprisoned. All right. And afterward, Moses went into the garden of Ruel, which was behind the house and there prayed to the Lord, his God, who had done mighty wonders for him. So even though he went in prison, sometimes people think that a prison sentence means that's the end because a lot of our people have been lied upon. I can tell you right now, a lot of our people are sitting up in prison and they shouldn't even be there. Okay. But that doesn't mean God has left you. He have a work for you to do right there in that prison. Sometimes it's to help people come to the knowledge of who the Lord is. No matter where God places you, he has a work for you to do. Christ was in prison. Okay. Uh, you know, or my, my, most of our ancestors have been in prison. Maybe you've been in prison and you thought God was against you. Now, for things that you did that was wrong. <laughs> you know, if you was wrong, you was wrong. He may have let it work out for your good. But there are some times that we ain't doing, we really ain't do anything. And we're placed in there like, you know, people told lies that we did this or we did that. Things were planted on us or whatever. Right. So, um, so Moses went into the garden of Ruel, which is behind the house. And there he, there prayed to the Lord, his God, who had done mighty wonders for him. And it was whilst. He prayed, he looked opposite to him and behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground. That's that stick that you see with Moses, which was planted in the midst of the garden. And he approached the stick and he looked and behold, the name of the Lord God of hosts was engraved there. The Lord placed a stick in the garden there for Moses. Written and developed upon the stick was the, was the name of the Lord God of hosts. And he read it and stretched forth his hand and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket and the stick was in his hand. And this is the stick which all the works of our God will perform. Remember, as we went over the Red Sea, the Lord said, put that stick over the sea and he parted the seas as we're going to see soon and as we move on in the story. All right. After he had created heaven and earth and all the hosts of them, seas, rivers, and all their fishes. So I'm going to read it again. And this is the stick with with which all the works of our God were performed. So God gave Moses, that stick that Moses had was the actual stick that God used in the acts that he performed in the beginning of creation. That's why that stick was so important. Because it was a stick that God used, all right, in creation, all right. He used, he, it was, it was the stick with which all the works of God were performed after he had created heaven and earth and all the hosts of them seas, rivers, and all their fishes, all right. And when God had driven Adam from the garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and went until the ground from which he was taken. So even the Lord even used that stick when um, Adam had, you know, messed up him and Eve and the Lord took them out of the garden of Eden. All right. When he driven, when he drove him out because they had eaten from the tree of good and evil. So he had to take him out of there. Yes. Unless they would have ate from the tree of life and lived forever in sin. Because they sinned against God at that point for doing what he said not to do. So if if they had ate from the tree of life, we would have been in sin forever. We wouldn't have been able to be purged from our sins. Christ wouldn't have been able to come and die for our sins. Okay, so that's why he said, no, they got to get out of this garden. Get them out of here. Because they chose to eat from the tree of good and evil. But they should have ate from the tree of life, not the tree of good and evil. (laughs) Right. So so when God had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and went until the ground from which he was taken. Remember, from dust we are and to dust we return when we die because God made us from the dirt of the earth. Another sign, the dirt is a dark color. Okay, 
So there's no way that the people that claim to be us could be us, right? Because they came from us, right? Later on, after creation, they weren't there in the beginning because as the deeper you dig, the blacker it gets, okay? Now we were always different shades of, of people because uh, of sickness that was put upon us, leprosy and all kind of different vitiligo and all of that from sinful acts that our forefathers, you know, did against the Lord. So sometimes that's where the lighter complexion comes in. Some of it is that. Some of it is also we're not in our land anymore because I notice whenever I go away, I'm like 10 shades darker. And if I were to stay over there where we're from, I wouldn't be this light myself. Okay, so there's something within my gene or whatever that I need that sun because being in this cold and all of that kind of stuff does not help for me with complexion wise. Okay. Now some of some also, yes, there's mixing in of European people, you know, in some of our families, but it just doesn't just come from that. So we were always darker complected people because we came from the dirt of the earth, right? And it tells you in the Bible, it tells you that the Lord has the woolly hair. So no other group of people got that woolly hair, but black people, all right? It tells you about how Christ looks in the book of Revelation. Burnt bronze skin, woolly hair, all right? It's been before us all the time. That's just in, during the time of Renaissance, they lied to switch the people out again so that we would believe that we were not God's people, that we were the Gentiles and we're not Gentiles, we're the Israelites. They're the Gentiles, okay? They can be at best converted, but blood-wise, they are not the Israelites we are, all right? So, so uh, this is the stick that the Lord did his works upon. The stick came down um, to Noah, and was given to Shem. Remember I told you after that flood was Ham, Shem, and Japheth. All right. The Shemites are the Israelites. That's us, all 12 tribes. We're Shemites. The Hamites are the other African people, okay, uh, that are not Shemites. That's why they try to put us in with them because we're all people of color. So they try to throw us in and say, no, y'all are Hamites. We're not Hamites, we're Shemites. All right, and the Japhites, Japheth, who was Noah's other son, uh, those are more of the Arab people, okay? Now, we're mixed in with a lot of people too, but uh, we are Shemites. The 12 tribes, we're Shemites, okay? So, um, the stick came down to Noah and was given to Shem and his descendants until it came into the hand of Abraham, the Hebrew, so even Abraham had that same stick, all right? Abraham also had that stick that was given to Moses. That's a powerful stick. I mean, you may, I'm, shoot, I'm looking for the stick. <laughs> Give me that stick, Lord. Whew. Okay, that, that thing is powerful. Okay, parting the seas and all of that. <laughs> okay, don't sleep on God's stuff. All right, the stick came down to Noah, was given to Shem, came to Abraham, the Hebrew. When Abraham had given all he had to his son Isaac, he also gave to him the stick. So Isaac also had the stick. And when Jacob had fled to Paddan Aram, he took it into his hand. And when he returned to his father, he had not left it behind him. So Jacob, we're Jacob's children. We're from the 12 tribes. So Jacob had, Grandpa Jacob had that stick, y'all, right? Also, when he went down to Egypt, he took it into his hand and gave it to Joseph. Joseph had the stick. One portion above his brethren was given to Joseph because Joseph was sold into slavery, right? So his father wanted to make it up to him. He gave him that same stick, right? Um. He gave it to Joseph, one portion above his brethren, for Jacob had taken it by force from his brother Esau, right? 
which is you know who. And after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Egypt came into the house of Joseph and the stick came into the hand of Ruel, the Midianite. And when he went out of Egypt, he took it in his hand and planted it in his garden. And that's how Moses got the stick. And all the mighty men of the, of the, Kenite, of the Kenites tried to pluck it when they endeavored to get Zipporah, his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. So that stick remained planted in the garden of Ruel until he came who had a right to it and took it. So Moses had the right to it because he was the new leader. And when Ruel saw the stick in the hand of Moses, he wondered at it and he gave him his daughter Zipporah for a wife because he said, wait a minute, this ain't no joke. I, I don't put this man in jail and all of that, but God is with him. Something is up. I'm going to get on his good side now. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> let's, let's get together here. You want you want my daughter? <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give her to you. You're going you to marry her. So that's, you know, what was going on. So now Moses has this stick that God gives him. And it has the name of the Lord on it. Okay. I am that I am. So now we're in Joshua, the 78th chapter. We're getting ready to wrap it up because uh, they'll soon be signing off. At that time died Baal, Canaan, son of Akbar, king of Edom, and was buried in his house in the land of Edom. And after his death, the children of Esau sent to the land of Edom and took from there a man who was in Edom whose name was Hadad, and they made him king over them in the place of Baal, Canaan, their king. All right, so we got Esau still doing stupidness back then, you know, having all, you know, uh, you know, being involved with these people. So he's, he's not, um, he's no longer an Israelite, so to speak, even though he was born one, you can't unbecome it, but he decides he's going to be with these other nations. Okay, so this is what, what Esau does. So anyway, join us again next week for the next portion of this. Thank you for joining in. Kwam Yasharala Kwam. Check me out every week from 7 to 8 p.m. Bronxnet.org, uh, channel 9, 951 2137, the Inspire channel. Check me out on YouTube time click on click me on youtube okay um share my youtube videos share uh like and join the, the 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 page all right join the group all right also check me out on hebrewconnect.tv and on instagram all right so kwam yasharala kwam share this video share it people need to know the truth all these lies they've been telling all these years please all right so let's do what the lord says because this this, this world is is about to that's that's about it we 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 at the end now god bless you god keep you is my prayer kwam yasharala kwam and you stay balanced stop using church intimidation controlling manipulation jezebel and all them spirits fall back not trying to hear it go with jesus walk in peace on your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world i'm that jc supergirl jesus christ belt of truth arm of god i'm slaying you power of the word to a sword mc heaven rocks for her lord thought they crept in unaware didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there not getting down with your tactics undoctrinal practice reading